Today I wanted to talk about how singularities and point particles are nonsense. And I thought about doing this as two separate videos, but there's so much overlap that it would, they would be largely redundant. And both of these are cases of mathematicians run amok thinking they're physicists and not bothering to think about the physical limitations that would prevent singularities or point particles from actually existing. To begin with, we have the wave problem. Every particle, quantum fluctuation, photon, absolutely everything has wave properties. Wave properties include wavelengths and frequencies. So to get a singularity or point particle, you would have to have a zero wavelength and an infinite frequency. And that wave does not exist. Now, the converse wave of having an infinite wavelength and a zero frequency doesn't exist either. In order to have an infinitely sized universe, say, you would have to have an infinite number of objects that had physically real wavelengths. It couldn't just be one object. B, you have the infinite density problems. So you have things like energy, charge, mass, which if they're distributed in a point, in a singularity, you would have to have an infinite density. An infinite density is a physical impossibility. So in order to explain energy, charge, and mass, you must have a non-zero radius of some point. That's just elementary logic. And I've discussed the physics of how you get each of these energy, charge, and mass in other videos. Uh, if I remember, I'll try to link a couple below. Okay, C, we have angular momentum and magnetic moment re problem because any object that has angular momentum or magnetic moment must have a non-zero radius. So there's, it's impossible for an object to have angular momentum or magnetic moment and be a point particle or a singularity. So any particle that we've known has to have a non-zero radius. And if you have angular momentum and magnetic moment, you must have rotation. So while physicists will say, well, particle spin may not be real spin, um, if it has angular momentum and magnetic moment, it must have some form of real rotation. And that rotation is going to be some physical form of spin. So we have to be able to define spin in a way that is physically real. And that, once again, requires a non-zero radius. An object that's a point particle can't spin, can't rotate. Then we have the physicality problem. Any point or line, and you can try to draw one to see this is true, must be three-dimensional in order to be observed. So for it to be physically real and observable, it must be three-dimensional. If I draw a line in space, like I drew here, in order to be observable, it has to have width as well as the length, and it also has to have depth, even if it's a few atoms deep. You can't get a visible line or a visible point without it being a three-dimensional object. So any physically real object is going to be a non-singularity or non-point particle. It's going to have some real radius, some real three-dimensional dimensions. And then we have the degeneracy pressure problem. Two particles can't occupy the same state, including the same position. So if you have two electrons, they exert pressure against each other, which is called degeneracy pressure. 
and this is related to the Pauli exclusion principle. But we don't exactly know what the, the nature of the force that's pushing objects together. But what theory tells us, as Freeman Dyson discovered, the solidity of objects, like, like the table, like the board, is because your electrons are touching the electrons of the table, and that's why a table feels solid. So we have a case where the solidity in matter is due to this degeneracy pressure, and the degeneracy pressure means it has a non-zero radius. There's also degeneracy pressure between electrons, between neutrons. Neutron degeneracy pressure is important in neutron stars. Electron degeneracy pressure is important with uh, white dwarfs. And so a neutron star is incompressible because the neutrons can't occupy the same point of space. And also protons and neutrons can't occupy the same point in space. So that's a little bit different than the Pauli exclusion principle, but in atomic theory, protons and neutrons don't occupy the same region of space. There's a degeneracy pressure, a, an ultra strong, strong type force that repels against the strong force that holds protons and neutrons together. And so you always have this problem of protons and neutrons occupy space. It's, they're not point particles. They always have a reach in the space. They don't decay. Neutrons can decay to protons and electrons, but electrons and protons don't decay. So you never get matter that occupies a singularity or a point. If you could, hypothetically, a point, you could have an infinite number of point particles in a point. But because a point particle can't exist, that's not a possibility. So these are a few of the basic reasons why you can't have a singularity or a point particle and why it's non-physical nonsense that, yeah, sure, you can write an equation where you have, have it, but it's not physically real for these reasons. And I'm sure I could think of a few more if I wanted to, to do a longer video on it. So I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you learned something. And if you did, please like it, share it with your physicist friends, and subscribe for my next video. And if you'd like to learn more about quantum field theory and my, my particle theory research, I have some books for sale. And buying a book or donating on Patreon or PayPal helps me in my retirement, which I appreciate it. And I, by reading one of my books, I hope you learn a lot more about quantum field theory. So thanks for watching.